Hi everyone, welcome to the Fashion Experiment. I'm Dr. Bridget, your professor of all things fashion. And today's topic is branding. So I'm doing a entire series on advertising and promotion. Uh, you should view my advertising and promotion intro video to learn the importance of advertising and promotion. And now I'm going to discuss branding. So in my first advertising and promotion video, I discussed the importance of advertising and promotion to retailers in the fashion industry because our product changes every season. So with that change, the message that we send to our customer about our product must also change. Of course, the overall business stays the same, so our mission is going to stay consistent, but how we connect our mission to the product of the moment, you know, is going to be different. So in our discussion today about branding, I'm going to talk more about how we create a business and what we want consumers to think about our business, our products, and our services, because you don't want to leave it up to the customer. You tell your customer what you want them to think about you, your business, your brand, and what you sell. And in order to do that, you need to know who you are as a brand. And that's what we're going to discuss today. So let's get started. I hope you're excited because branding, branding a product is your opportunity to create something from nothing. Okay. So for all you entrepreneurs who want to open your own business, and create your own brand and sell your branded products, what is it going to be? You know, you don't, it's, it doesn't exist. You know, it's all in your mind. So you have to create that. And that's the exciting part about it. And it, it can be difficult, but you do it piece by piece. So here we are at branding. What is a brand? So when you create a brand, for your product, for your service, first of all, you need a name. What are you going to call it? You may also attach some type of symbol to your brand or and or a character. So lots of cereals have characters. So we have Tony the Tiger, Toucan Sam, and other characters out there that are associated with cereals and some um Lots of different brands have a character. So do you think that's consistent with how you want consumers and the public to view your brand? Or would you, you know, say, no, I don't need a character. You would likely have some type of logo. So a symbol could be what you create for your logo, or you could just have a symbol and then a slogan. You could also connect specific type of font style with your brand color scheme, color combinations. These are all elements of how you bring. All right. So why you do it? You do it because you need to create some physical representation of who you are so that when the public, when consumers see this combination of a name, a symbol and a slogan, they immediately know what it is that is connected to you know, Bridget's Beauties, and this is my cosmetic line, and my cosmetic line shows a beautiful black woman, the face of a beautiful black woman with a cursive B in the outline of lips in pink, you know, and this is my brand name, Bridget's Beauties, the symbol, beautiful black face, cursive B, with the outline of lips and whatever my slogan is. So whenever my customer sees this, whoever I'm talking to my product to, they'll immediately connect it to my business and my brand. And you must do this because there are thousands of cosmetic brands out there, thousands, hundreds of thousands of clothing lines out there. You know, you're not the first in this segment. So what are you going to do to set yourself apart? How are you going to form your business 
and how you want the public to view your business and interpret you. To say, oh, Bridget's Beauties is a, a high-end cosmetics line with the best quality ingredients that will make me look and feel beautiful. I tell you that about my brand so that you see me as being a high-end cosmetic brand. I don't let you think what you want. I tell you what to think, and that's done through branding. So every time my customer, any any client, any woman in the public sees Bridget's Beauties, they will automatically connect it to be a high-end cosmetics brand with the highest level of ingredients that makes them feel and look beautiful. Because every time they see me, that's what I'm telling them. I'm telling them that through my social media posts. I'm telling them this when they see an advertisement. I'm telling them this when they come to my website. You tell them and you build your brain. It's building a personality. You create a foundation for who your business is as if it were a person and tell the public what you are. All right, so your brand identity, I've kind of already touched on this, but I have to reinforce it because you're going to be faced with competition and you're going to be faced with consumers who don't, you know, don't accept who you tell them you are. So what are you going to do? You have to maintain your identity. If someone tells you, you know, came and told me, oh, you're not a college professor, you're not, you know, an expert in your field. I wouldn't stand for that because that's false. So you have to maintain who you are as a business, as a brand, stand behind your product and what you what what you represent yourself to be. And that is how you build your identity. You don't change it. So if someone says, oh, I don't like that color combination, that chocolate brown and hot pink and black. I don't like that chocolate combination for your bridges beauties, you know, or your slogan sounds funny. You build it and you reinforce it every time. You don't change the colors. One day is black, chocolate, brown, and pink, and then the next day is black, white, red. You have to build the identity and co consistently reinforce it every time it's communicated through your advertising and promotion to the public, to your customer, on your website, through your social media, through whatever means you use to promote your product. Everything should be consistent and the same. So the brand archetype is your character. So this is just some discussion about creating a character, identifying some real person or some fictitious character, animal that you want to connect to your brand that is a visual representation of how you want other people to view your brand. Okay, so I have examples here, and there's lots of companies that use some type of imagery, you know, instead of a symbol. It's up to you to decide how you want your brand to be represented. Of course, you're going to have a name. You're going to have some type of color scheme. You should have some type of slogan. Your logo is up to you, how you want it to be represented, but it should be something that's unique and something that instantly people can see and connect it back to who you are. So creating your brand identity. Your brand identity is created by all those brand ingredients that I discussed, and you need to determine what those pieces will be and how to best represent them. And being consistent, which I've already um, communicated. So all these slides are information that you can read on your own. I'm verbally sharing the most important parts of your brand identity, building your brand identity. It's really going to happen alone in a quiet space with a piece of paper and a pencil or pen, and you're writing down your ideas and creating you know, different interpretations, different combinations of a brand name, a slogan and logo, 
a brand name, some character, some archetype, slogan, and a symbol, you know, different versions until you get to the one that you think best represents how you want people to interpret you and your brand and your product. It's something that you really do needs to take some time formulating, you know, your best brain, your best representation of how you want other people to see you, your business, and the products or service that you, you'll be selling. And then I have some other tips here. So conducting an informal marketing analysis. So understanding who your customer is, so who you want to sell your product to, okay? A targeted group of people. And how would this group of people receive your brand information? You know, do they like this? Do you think they would like this color? They would be drawn to it. It's something that would pique their interest and draw them to your website. You know, and how are you going to communicate with them and interface with them? And what do you, what do they think about other brands or your competition? What do they like about it? What don't you like about it? And you're just using this information to help you better formulate your brand to stand out in the market amongst all the competition. You know, and figure out what that thing is within your brain that's different from everything else. And that's really what you want to highlight and capitalize on. And then your brand logo. So a brand logo is really important because this is the visual representation. And people, lots of people are stimulated visually. So you really want to think about, you know, what symbol or what logo do you want to produce, again, that is going to be unique and different, but not too unique and different. Unique and different in a way that it's not what your com competitors are doing, but something that speaks to your target market and to who you are as a business owner and as a brand. All right, so this brings us to the end of our branding discussion. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be having two more videos in my advertising and promotion series that will continue to discuss the importance and relevance of advertising and promotion, branding to fashion merchandising and how important it is because as I said before, this is how you communicate with your customers. Not like we do in our personal relationships when you can pick up the phone and call someone and pick up your phone and text them. The advertising and promotion tools marketing tools that exist, including branding, are the only means of communicating with the public, with consumers about your business, about your brand, your services and products. So you want to make sure your message is clear, is consistently sending the same information about who you are and how you want to be viewed by customers and what your product and services are going to do for them. So you my Bridget's Beauties Cosmetics line is my example. You know, I'm a black woman, so I'm I'm embracing who I am, connecting that to my cosmetic line, you know, including a little personal um, touch with my cursive V, my outline of lips. So that connects, I think, to a modern one woman, to the youthfulness of my target market, possibly. And I begin to build on that, creating the slogan to go with it, creating packaging for my product, creating a website layout that connects to the youthfulness in a woman, and always communicating what my product is going to do for them. So high-end cosmetic brand that includes the best quality materials that will make you look and feel beautiful. You know, that's what I'm constantly communicating through every interaction that my customer will have with me and my business on all platforms, from my website, social media, to the packaging of my product, to the way I choose to distribute my products, or even the box that I use to, you know, package it, to ship it out. Any interaction I have, my emails that I send to my customer, you know, thanking them for their order, 
letting them know that their product is on the way, it's shipped. It's also going to be some brand messaging going on there as well. So that at every point where they interact with my business, they're always getting a piece of me, you know, my brand and what I am and what it's going to do for them. All right. This has been the Fashion Experiment. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on branding. Have a great one. Bye.